is his final messenger. Brothers and sisters, as we know that just a few days ago we had started a new year in the Hijri calendar and the calendar of Islam. It is 1438 years ago that the Prophet وسلم, made the Hijrah from Mecca to Medina and this marks the start of the calendar and it was not always like this until the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu that it was during his time when the state that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam had established grew the greatest and due to the needs of the administration there came about a discussion for the Muslims as to when should the new year begin for the Muslims. And there were various suggestions and recommendations that were given by the companions as to when the new year should begin. Some of the companions, they suggested that we should use the date when the Prophet ﷺ was born and let's use that to mark the beginning of the new year. While others suggested that no, maybe we should use the day when the Prophet ﷺ first re received the revelation. Others had suggested using ca other calendars, such as the Persian calendar or the Roman calendar. And yet others had suggested that maybe we should mark the beginning of the calendar for when the Prophet ﷺ left this world. But ultimately they came to a conclusion that let us use the occasion of the hijrah of the Prophet ﷺ that he made from Mecca to Medina and let us use this to mark the beginning of the new year. 
And the reason why this was this occasion was chosen over all the other occasions. Imam Ibn Hajr quotes and he says that Umar radiallahu ta'ala who says that this incident or this occasion of hijrah from Makkah to Medina was indeed a great chapter in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for it distinguished between what was right and what was wrong. It distinguished between what was truth and what was false. And we can look in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and even if we look in the Quran that we see that the chapters that the surahs are divided mainly in two separate categories, one being the Makki surahs and one being the Madani surahs. And the Mufassirin are of the opinion that any surah, any verse that was revealed, regardless of where it was revealed, if it was before the Hijrah, it is considered a Makki surah. And if it was revealed after the Hijrah, regardless of where it was revealed in Medina, outside of Medina, Uhud or Badr, or, or Khandaq, or uh, any other location, it will be considered, and it is considered a Madani surah. And the reason for this is that we see that before the Hijrah, Muslims were weak, Muslims were oppressed, Muslims were few in numbers, Muslims were living life under oppression. They were living life as secret Muslims, some of them. Some of them had endured so much abuse and endured so much ridicule that they were forced to make hijrah to Abyssinia. And this hijrah is known as the first hijrah before the hijrah, the major hijrah that happened from Mecca to Medina. But after the Prophet ﷺ made the hijrah from Mecca to Medina, the situation did not remain the same. And this was a monumental moment, not only in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, but in the, in the history of mankind. Because this marked the beginning of the establishment of this religion in its entirety. If we look at the verses that were revealed in Mecca, that were revealed to the Prophet wasallam, most of them had to do about strengthening the faith, strengthening the Iman of the Prophet of the companions that were supporting the Prophet wasallam. Verses that talked about the day of judgment, verses that talked about heaven and hell, verses that talked about various stories about the previous nations and the previous prophets and messengers that came before Muhammad But after the hijrah, all of this changed and now the verses that were revealed to the Prophet had to do more with the implementation of the deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we look in the Quran that we can see that the verses that were revealed that are in regards to financial system or the, 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 the penal code and any rules and regulations that are to be implemented were revealed in Medina, not in Mecca. And the reason why it was not revealed in Mecca was because the situation did not permit for the Muslims to implement the deen in its entirety, the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants it to be. So we can see that this was a significant event, not only in the life of the Prophet sallallahu but in the history of mankind, because this marked the beginning of the implementation of the deen in its entirety. And over a course of several years, little by little, bits and pieces, chapters, Sometimes chapters, sometimes entire chapters, and sometimes verses by verses, bits and pieces, the Quran, the revelation was completed. Now when we look in the life of the Prophet ﷺ, we see and we know that this deen, this religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen and has given to us, that we are so proudly a part of, we can understand and we can see that this is a complete way of life. Not just a personal thing that we keep to ourselves, not just praying five times a day, not just fasting, not just giving charity, not just going for Hajj, but a complete and total way of life. And all of that can be implemented if it's implemented in its entirety. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked the Muslims to do. 
Will you believe only in a piece and a portion of the Quran and while you reject the other? While you reject the other part of it? And if we look in the world today, what is happening with the Muslims? Very important for us to tie it to the life of the Prophet. What is happening with the Muslims today? What we see in Syria, for example, what has been happening for the past five years. More than half a million innocent men, women, and children have been murdered. And that, can, that continues to happen. When we look at the situation of Masjid al-Aqsa, for example, we see that how many years, how long has it been under occupation? We see the suffering of the Muslims of Burma. We see the suffering of the Muslims in Yemen. We see the Muslims and their suffering in Iraq, and so on and so forth. Everywhere that you see, most of the places that you see, anywhere that there is a humanitarian crisis, you see that the Muslims are suffering. And the reason why this is occurring is because the, is, the, this deen is not implemented in its entirety anywhere in the world today. And the Prophet wasallam has told us about this in an authentic hadith that is narrated by Imam Ahmad. And we will look at this hadith and we will say that how accurate that the Prophet ﷺ predicted these times. The Prophet ﷺ says, that the prophethood will remain with you, with the people, as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to do so, and it will remain until He wills, and then it will be taken away. Meaning the Prophet would no longer be with the people. And we see that that is what happened. And then the Prophet says, The Prophet continues on and he says that after that will be the rightly guided khulafa who will come after me. And that will remain with you until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes so. And then they will be taken away from you. And that time will come to an end. And we see that that is how it happened. The Prophet ﷺ did not live. He was a human being. He had, he had uh, a designated time. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then he met, he, he, he met his fate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had destined his time to be in this earth. After that, the Khulafa came. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Uthman, and Sayyidina Ali, and their time came and went. After that, the Prophet says, Then the Prophet says, What will come after this will be, will be biting kingships. And the, uh, 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 and the, the, the scholars, the muhaddithin, the explanation that they give is that the Prophet ﷺ, when he says biting kingship, this is referred to how the Pledge of Allegiance were taken by, was taken by force from the people and how it was passed on from family to family and not the way that the Prophet ﷺ had shown. And we can see how this was carried out in the various dynasties in the history of Islam. You had the, uh, the Abbas of Khilafah and then you had the Umayyad and the Fatimid and so on and so forth. And we put that in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and we see that how all of this has come true. And then after that, the Prophet says, that will stay as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses, and then it will be taken away. And then what will come after that, the Prophet says, And then there will come a time when Muslims will be living under oppression under people, under rulers, under people who will be in power, where they will be oppressing the Muslims. And we put that into perspective today, and most of the scholars of the hadith are of the opinion that this is probably that time that we are going through today. Anywhere you see in the world today, no one can really say that the, the people who are in charge of the affair of the Muslims, they represent Islam in its entirety and they represent what the Muslims want. No one can really say this with a straight face. So the Prophet says that this time will come and it will be with you as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to 
and then that time will go away. And then what will come after that? The Prophet ﷺ says, ثُمَّ يَرْفَعُهَا إِذَا شَاءٍ يَرْفَعُهَا And then what happens after that? The Prophet ﷺ says, ثُمَّ تَكُونُ خِلَافَةً عَلَى مِنْ هَاجِ النَّبُوَّةِ The Prophet ﷺ says, then there will come a time when Islam will be implemented just as it was during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. So this time is going to come, it will come, this is a guarantee. This is something that the Prophet ﷺ prophesied and we can see that 90% of the hadith the Prophet ﷺ said has come true. The only part that is remaining is the last 10. So we can see the Prophet ﷺ says that, the, that how Islam was implemented after the Prophet ﷺ made hijrah, it will come back to that. It will come back to that. But where are we today? Where do we stand today? How do we relate this to where we are today with the beginning of the new year for the Muslims? 1,438 years, now we are 1438 now. We just completed 1437, we're in 1438 now. Where do we stand with all of this? How do we relate to this? And what lesson can we draw from this? Today we see, and this is a word that a lot of people are talking about. When you listen to the news, when we, you watch on, online and you hear people talk, you know, this Islamic State and, and ISIS and ISIL and so on and so forth. After all, they do claim that they are the Islamic State. And they do claim that they are representing Islam and Muslims. But nothing can be further than the truth. As we Muslims all over the world have witnessed for the past several years, the atrocities that have been committed in the name of Islam, the murder of innocent men, women, and children, and according to according to a report that was published by the United States National Counterism Counterterrorism Center, it tells us that 82 to 97 percent of the victims of this cult are Muslims. So I would like to know what kind of Islam and what kind of deen are they representing? Because this was not the deen that the Prophet ﷺ implemented after he made the hijrah from Makkah to Medina. This was not the deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed to Muhammad ﷺ as a mercy for all of mankind. And when we look at the statistics, we see that most of the attacks that happen the victims, majority of them, are Muslims. And then in regards to this, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? That those who claim to be Muslims, and they go out and they kill, and they murder innocent men, women, and children. Let us look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, verse number 93, خَالِدًا فِيهَا وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَلَعَنَهُ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُ عَذَابًا عَظِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whoever calls himself a Muslim and this ayah in particular, this verse in particular is addressing the Muslim, the believer who has made the declaration of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and he goes out and he kills men, women and children, anyone and in particular, the believing men and women and children, what is, what is their punishment? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whoever goes out and kills a believer, muta'ammidan, intentionally, فَجَزَاهُ جَهَنَّمُ His recompense, his reward is the hellfire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not end there. خَالِدًا فِيهَا He goes on and he says, In it he will live forever and ever. وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ It does not end over there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues on. And He says, And He has earned the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has anger. He has earned it. And then not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not end there. He goes on and He says, وَلَعَنَهُ And He has earned the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about it for a moment. How severe this is and how serious this is that whoever kills believing men, women, and children intentionally, فَجَزَاهُ جَهَنَّمُ He will be in hellfire, 
qalidan fiha forever and ever wa ghadiba Allah alayhi he has earned the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only that wa la'anahu he has earned the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he goes on and he says wa addalahu adhaban adhima and furthermore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for him a great punishment a great punishment. What could become more after this? After earning the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After earning the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After earning the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After being condemned to the hellfire for eternity. And on top of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared even a bigger punishment for you. So this tells us that this is not what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had implemented. This is not what is representing Islam. These people do not represent Muslims. What does represent Islam and what does represent Muslim? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had showed it to us and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has foretold about it in the hadith that I've mentioned that this time will come to come back again when Islam will be implemented in its entirety the way that it was implemented during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use us for his cause, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the proper understanding of this deen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us role models for this deen, to make us ambassadors of this deen, so that we may, we may present this deen in its entirety, in, 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 in its all fairness to the ones whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide to this, to this deen. Allahumma salli wa sallim. وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين. الحمد لله الحمد لله حمد كثير كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله ملائكته يسلون على النبي أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما الله مسلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين خصوصا أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبو بكر الصديق رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى بقية تمام العشرة المبشرة وتمام أهل البيت صلاة وسلام دائما متلازمين إلى يوم الدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر عداء الدين اللهم سر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم وخذ من خذ دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم اللهم سر الإخوان المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم سر الإخوان المستضعفين في كل مكان خصوصا في السورية وفي بورما وفي فلسطين وفي باكستان وفي ولاية فلوريدا اللهم اغفر لجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم الأموات إنك يا مولانا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر البغي عذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون